Hi guys, let me show you how I made my boho beach house, share the inspiration behind it, and even something you could do differently. Let's start with the mood board. So this is the first image that I saved. I really liked the angled ceiling, and the big open windows, and the gorgeous ocean view from the balcony. I wanted two windows in the corner of the kitchen, and an angled sink tucked away in there too. I wanted to add a boho rug, of course, and a lot of pot plants with different textured pots. The colors in this build were quite neutral with whites, grays, blacks, and browns. In the entry of this build, I wanted to keep it quite slot conscious, so instead of doing a fully custom door in this entry, I chose to use an Oasis partition door uh, and then frame it with white rectangular partitions. I like using white recs in this situation for a couple of reasons. When you open the door, it looks a little bit more finished and hides all those extra bits behind your wall. Secondly, the door doesn't naturally provide any camera collision, so when zoning in, it also stops the camera. Since the Oasis partition door has a little bit of a lip on the bottom, I hit this with a Hinken bookshelf. These are kind of an MVP item for me, and you'll see me using them a lot in this build. To frame the door, I used more white rectangular partitions, and these also make up the walls in the rest of the house too. Next to the door is a small house plant made of a potted spider plant, and the bottom is made from an Eaton Devil salad bowl. Coming around to the entryway table and the mirror, I have the top of the table decorated with my favorite lantern, the alchemical lantern, an open book, and the candlelit sundries that are tucked into the wall to hide the frame. Two glade draw tables make up the main part of the table, with a message book stand hidden just underneath. The base of the table is made with a cheese collection floated up from the floor below, so just the top part is visible. To make the mirror, I used the back of the Forever Friends portrait. It's not completely reflective, but it looks a little less flat than just a petition dyed grey. I won't be able to grab the sides, so to show you the sides are made with wood slat petitions. The arch at the top of the mirror is made with the bottom edge of the disordered wardrobe. This part of the disordered wardrobe is black and not dyeable, so I dyed the rest of the mirror black to match it. And of course, the Hingen bookshelf is here again to make up the bottom edge. On the other side of the entryway, I didn't have a lot of slots to play with, but I didn't want a flat white wall. So I made this entry closet using some wood slats again to make the vertical pieces. A low bookshelf makes up the cupboards at the top. And I can't grab these either, but the sliding doors are made with the back of wooden staircase bookshelves. The living room area is where I started to get a little out of control with slots. The potted plants on the divide between the entry and the living room are the plants on top of the apothecary's workbench. 
Inside one of them is a Glade vase hidden with some flowers and the antique wall shelves cap off this edge. I used small white rectangular partitions to separate the two rooms but still provide a good view of the whole space. On top of the coffee table is a hand poured coffee and the coffee table itself is made up of four oriental partitions. These are floated from the floor below and just use this top edge poking through while the rest are hidden behind the wall. I used four of them in a square orientation with the last one off to the side a little bit as if you could pull it closer to you while enjoying your coffee. The rug is one of my favorite parts of this build and is largely made up with table mats. I know it's a lot. It's 25 slots for the mats alone. To pattern this rug, I used two imitation long windows making a line running down along the side. And wood slat partitions make up the squares or dots. I have more wood slats running along this row of black table mats to create a geometric pattern for those boho vibes. Were you keeping track? That's 36 slots total for this rug. Worth it, right? Thankfully, this sofa is a little bit more simple. This is made with a leather sofa and the back is another Hingen bookshelf, while wood slats make up the arms and frame the back. Sitting on top are some matching cushions. To create the illusion of windows leading out to the balcony, I used dance poles to create seams, creating this glass pane effect. The feet of the table are made with two butterfly specimens in a cross pattern and another dance pole to make the main support. The top of the table is made with an Eaton name day cake. On top of that is a wine glass and the rest of the wine is on the floor in a chilled red. Beside the table are two glade chairs that look out over the ocean. And there are some potted plants on the balcony as well with this Eaton Rollenberry tart and a Goo Goo lamp. Both pots are made with terracotta pots floated up from the floor below and the one in the back is floated slightly higher than the one in the front. The foliage in the back is made with a potted dragon tree. On the other side of the balcony, I have some towels ready to go for the beach. The first being towels. And the second is attached to this towel hanger that's sunk into the wall to look like it is hanging on the railings. There are multiple heavenly ornamental arrays lined up on the side, so just the last one pokes through to create this fairy light look. To string them all together, I use this stuffed marlin, which has this really awesome rope detail. And the background is the Azimstep Basmascape. Just a little bit of the mountains are poking up to kind of look like islands in distance. These are also sitting behind some unmelting ice petitions to look like the ocean. And this is not the most slot effective way to do this. So let me show you some options. Option one is my setup and uses the petitions on this side. I love how this looks like water, but it's a lot of slots. Option two is the back of the same petition. It gives you more color variation and you only need two to cover the span of my balcony. Option 3, the Hingen wardrobe, is a popular choice in the community because the back of the wardrobe looks a little bit like waves and if you add things like carbuncle lanterns and more mushroom lamps, you can really sell the illusion of water. To finish up the balcony, let's take a look at the railing. The top part of the railing is made up with the Hingen bookshelf. I needed two to span the full distance of this balcony.
The wires are made with cheese collections dyed grey. And wood slat partitions make up the vertical supports. Lastly, to add a little bit of depth to my scene, I floated up a mahogany aqueduct from below to project the water patterns, and a mushroom lamp is hidden right on top of it to add a little bit of a blue glow to the center of the water. As you enter the kitchen, you're greeted with some bar stools to sit on, some oranges to snack on, and some coffee to sip on at this breakfast counter made of two Hingen bookshelves and some wood slab petitions. Moving into the main part of the kitchen, the oven is made with a showcase for the glass front and a white screen behind it. The hot plate on top is made of four temple knight pieces and two table mats. The vent on the oven range is made of wooden plates. And I'm not going to be able to grab this, so please excuse my mess behind the walls here. But this is made with the end of a rustic chocobo counter. The cabinet door handles are made with glass jars, and that's not the only place I have them. This entire backsplash is made up mostly of glass jars and come from Ashen's Brain. I'll link her guide on how to make them in the description below. Each of these vertical lines are made up of the glass jars, and so another slot intensive part of the build, I think I have about 40 here. To make the horizontal lines, I used glade cupboards. These are floated from the floor below and stacked. And I used this back edge right here to make the thin horizontal line. The seams to divide the cabinets are white rectangular partitions, while the cabinet doors themselves are made up of wooden staircase bookshelves. The sink is the top part of a rustic chocobo counter. And the tap is made with the ale tap. So no water in the sink, just beer. But I think after I'm done with this video, I'm going to try and rearrange these countertops and fit in the new simple sink. This is so freaking cute. I can't believe we got this. To create a pot kind of like our inspiration picks, the pot plan on this windowsill is made up of two honey pots. To get the striped effect, all you need to do is line the honey pots up on top of each other, separate it by a pixel or two, and rotate one of them slightly. Inside is an arm and vase, more phasma scapes for the windows, and I can't grab these again. But the crossbars on the windows are made with Hingen fire pits. The depth on these allows the Phasma scape to stick through, while the rest of the window is the white rectangular partitions. On this wall, instead of upper cabinets, I opted to do some open shelves so it would add a little bit more visual interest. On top of the shelves is a sake set, two extra coffee mugs to make four total, 
A dish rack is sunk into the wall a little bit, so just the wine glasses and the bowl stick out, with an extra wine glass to make four wine glasses as well. On the top shelf is an Encyclopedia Eosia, and one of my favorite kitchen clutter items is the Oriental Supper. Depending on which way you rotate it, you can have three different configurations, maybe even more if you can hide the rest of the sticky outy bits. Lastly, another RM and vase, and another sake set to make the pot for this one. The shelf itself is made of an antique wall shelf, and to give a little bit of extra lighting, I've got an oasis lantern hidden over here in the corner. The refrigerator is made of more staircase bookshelves, and to make the horizontal line between the fridge and the freezer are two cutting boards. Before we finish, I wanted to show you how I did the ceiling. In my inspiration pick, it has an angled roof that goes from the balcony all the way up to the top of the ceiling. To achieve this look, I wanted to hide the windows on the imitation wooden skylights by moving some of them upwards and downwards to hide them behind the walls. The beams on the roof are also made with imitation wooden skylights, while the rest of the ceiling in both this space and the entryway are made with flooring mats. And that brings us to the end of the rambling for this video. Thanks for watching if you're still with me, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Happy housing!